so that um, we can finish up and we have a ways to go. So I'm gonna try to blaze through the rest at this point without any further stops. So this is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net. Uh, we're working through uh, some information that is extremely important. We're getting into an Electromagnetic Defense Task Force document. It's a 2018 report and it discusses um, the 5G networks, how the 5G is necessary for military dominance, um, and of course, um, global military dominance over all of us, the enemy. Um, mic high powered microwave systems, and uh, it talks about black starts and the cause of widespread failures that will result in civil unrest within hours within our cities worldwide. So control of 5G, they say, is roughly equivalent to control of the Internet. So whoever has control and does control 5G will control the Internet of Things. All the governments are on one mission, and that is to control all of us and the Internet and for mass mind control. And access to the 5G millimeter wave bandwidth will be critical to operations of all warfighting domains, in particular space command and control. 5G is boundary crossing, communications advancement, with nearly unlimited bandwidth and almost no latency. And they say that by the year 2035, 5G is expected to enable over 12.3 trillion in global economic output. The states or non-states that control the 5G network will dictate and control all digital transactions, including the ability to share and receive information. So let's be perfectly clear here. They're creating the competition, what states control 5G first. No, all of the countries are working together to control 5G, to control all of us. Again, they've reduced the FCC and the FAA impediments to uh, a rapid rollout and deployment of key enabling technologies in the US while incentivizing domestic manufacturing to help underpin component security. Um, this is a real important YouTube I did a number of years ago and I put it here just to remind myself to remind all of you or those that have not watched it to please watch it. It's called Water Wars, Stealing Water for Profit and Power. And um, our research team discovered a document out of the UK and out of Israel that talks about the planned infrastructure demise and how the Army Corps of Engineers, the US um, uh, geologists and more, were going to write false reports, and they are. And you're gonna hear about that in a minute. Um, we also need to understand that the World Bank is behind water legislation and management and regulate of all water resources. They said that the governments are entrusted with the responsibility for ensuring that water is allocated equitably. Governments must regulate the use, flow, and control of all types of water. Permits or licenses will be required. The permit grants a water right to individuals. Water is going to take our properties. The idea that we're running out and we're not. Again, permits will describe the types of water uses allowed and can be used and the water standards with which the permit holder must comply. We'll give the duration of the permit, the process for its renewal, and the water permit fees. Groundwater extraction by wells well spacing and the current amount of water drawn from the aquifer in question will be considered in deciding whether to grant a permit or not. While wells will, while permits will consider the depth of the well to verify the well depth does not exceed a specified depth. depth. So it would be very important for all of you that understand primary water, which I'll talk about in a minute, to drill for primary water. If you're sitting on country property and you currently have a well, you, you do not have a primary water well, most likely, and it's important to educate the well drillers 
that they're looking for primary water, not just a hole in the ground and pumping up water. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, there's also an executive order on the ocean policy to advance economic security and environmental uh, interest of the United States. Um, all the lakes, all the oceans are being taken over, all of them. In fact, when we were in London, we ran into a man that was at a maritime conference. And um, I asked, well, why are you at a maritime conference? And he said, well, we're being told by the IPCC to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and reduce our use of fuel for all of the shipping. So I said, how are you going to do that? He says, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to slow the transport times of the tankers on the oceans. So I want you to think about that. Think about these imposed trade wars, wars and tariffs. This is all part of absolutely trashing our economy. Think about slower ship speeds and the higher cost. Think about the increased time on the seas that these ships have to endure rogue waves that are manipulated by technology and other factors. Many of the ships won't make it for the extended time they have to be out at sea. So again, water is limiting our growth. While they're telling us we have to build more homes, they're telling us we don't have enough water. The World Bank, the United Nations, and the IMFs, our cities, our counties, our states, our corporate government agencies are all sounding the alarm that we're running out of water. They're disinfo and they're killing us. Why? Hopefully you will take the time, of course, to learn about primary water. Um, please go to primarywater.org and understand the water facts. Help get the truth out. Pass these half-page flyers out to everyone you know. And uh, listen to the YouTube that we have up called Primary Water Explained. Um, we are not running out of water, and we can't let the PSYOPs media campaign frighten us about the scarcity of water, and that's what they're doing. Don't be duped yet again. This uh, primary water explains, explains this diagram that you see right now. Sadly, we've all only been taught that our water comes from rain and snowmelt. That is not true. Rain and snowmelt is the evaporation of primary water that comes up renewable from down below the mantle of the earth when oxygen um, unites and hydrogen unite and come up as a vapor and turns into water. That's where we see um, our geysers, uh, the beautiful waterfalls in the Hawaiian Islands that continuously cascade down the tops of mountains that where it doesn't snow and they're not in valleys. Also, you have a higher IQ when you're accessing and drinking primary water. So we're dumbed down by drinking a faulty, man-made, manipulated reservoir and aqueduct system of water transfer. That's what it boils down to, and we're going to talk about that. And of course, maybe many of you know, it's horrifying actually, but Muammar Gaddafi was attacked by the United States and NATO. Um, he had constructed the largest irrigation system in the world's history. He was tapping into primary water cycle. This supplied 6.5 million cubic meters of fresh water per day to the various cities in Libya, enabling the country to grow fruits, vegetables, and grains otherwise impossible to cultivate in the desert. The project cost 25 billion U.S. dollars and was completed without financial support from any major countries or loans from the IMF bank. That was his mistake. He was breaking out of the Rothschild deception IMF United Nations grip. So we helped blow Libya up also. And we used depleted uranium nuclear bombs, cutting off the water supply to over six million Libyan people and sent them into a humanitarian crisis. A whistleblower called us and told us that we even blew up their well drilling equipment. They were told that it looked like missile launchers. 
So here's the psyops for water very quickly. They've told us that Cape Town was going to run out of water, zero day water. They were showing people lined up by hose bibs filling up water containers. It, it really forced a large migration because many people really did feel they were running out of water. I was on a radio show live interviewing my friend from Ireland and he said, did you know that Dublin's gonna run out of water in 70 days? And I said, oh. And I typed it in, I'm live on air. And sure enough, all over the internet, Dublin is running out of water in 70 days. Another PSYOPs media um, ploy carried by all of our regular media, all of them. Um, water shortages cripples Venezuela and in Australia they talk about the looming water crisis and they say that the world is facing a 40 percent water shortfall by 2030 they're posting signs they're at a level five water restrictions now in place now I want to tell you you see Mountain House in California out of water in days it was in the psyops media throughout the state well I knew that we, they weren't running out of water. Um, we, our research team checked out who was behind Mountain House. It's a smart community. It's Agenda 21 community, not far out of San Francisco. So we checked to see who acquired the original land. It was Rothschild. Then we called realtors down there and said, because they're having open houses. I went online. They're showing open houses on the weekends. I called up and I said, well, let me ask you, how can you sell houses when you're running out of water in days? And they said, you know, some of our relatives have told us that that's in the newspaper, but we're not running out of any water. And so we blew the cover. This was to be used as a universal studio back lot setup for running out of water. So for those of you that can attain more water, you must. You're gonna be moved off your land under the illusion of running out of water. And you're going to be smarter if you drink primary water. Severe water shortages will plunge England into the jaws of death in 25 years. Plunge England into the jaws of death. Uh, this is a map we found on, the, um, on one of the websites. Um, the effect of climate change on water supplies. And the map on the left um, shows the water supply risk if there is no climate change. And the red shows areas of high uh, water risks, and the really dark areas are extreme. The yellow is moderate, and the white is low. So again, on the left, if there was no climate change effects. On the right, because climate change is the new normal and increased weather weapons are occurring at an exponentially increased rate, they're showing us what we're gonna look like throughout the country with the water supply. And look at the areas that they're going to throw into extreme water deficiency. Look at that in the dark blood red. And then look at the bright orange. I would say we're pretty much out of water based on that map. That's why we've got to get it. They're putting moratoriums on well drilling, and if you don't drill now, you're not going to get to water. You're going to lose your land. You're going to have nothing to drink, and you're not going to be able to water your gardens, which is all part of it, and it's to reduce the oxygen supply. Can't make this stuff up. This is an advisory toilet to top tap. I mentioned that earlier. Wastewater treatment plants, recycling drinking water. This is already happening worldwide in many locations, recycling the drinking water from sewer, urine, poop, fecal material, pharmaceuticals into your municipal water drinking supply. But not to worry, they're going to use a blend. I told you they're going to put this fecal material in uphill streams and lakes and blend it into the reservoirs, pump it into your homes. Think about Flint, Michigan. Look at that lead situation. Do you know that Flint, Michigan is only one of many cities that has high, lev high, high levels of lead, only one of many, but, but all the water is contaminated. So I found um, that um, the current CEO of USA Inc. is proposing many, many new wastewater treatment plants. 
as an answer to the drinking water in the Central Valley in California. And if you go to stopthecrime.net to our email blast out section, uh, there's an expose about the current CEO's deception about water and having us drink fecal matter and setting us up with booby traps, which are what the wastewater treatment plants are, and I will explain. This is most important to understand regarding the Fukushima radiation. The, organi the organisms that eat the bad bacteria in the fecal matter in our sewer and wastewater treatment plants, again, these are the organisms that eat the bad bacteria in the fecal are destroyed by radiation, which in turn means that the bad bacteria survives and mutates into a more dangerous form due to the same radiation exposure. This is a very, very well orchestrated plan. Very, very well. So let's talk about this new Green Deal. Um, it's not new, it's not green, and it's not a deal. Any word at all that alludes to green um, is brown. It's death. It's not about life. This is neuro-linguistic programming that we have all been psyopsed into. So think of brown and death, not green, because you're going to hear more about green loans, green credit, green this, green that. Brown and death and genocide plans. That's what this is, plain and simple. It's a done deal. It's not new. It's a done deal. So those people that are spreading the propaganda of this woman who is leading this new Green Deal charge are also psyops in the sense that they don't understand what they're talking about. And it's very dangerous now to not understand what you're talking about. You need to look at your climate action plans. If you're not looking at your climate action plans, then you're not doing your homework, nor are you doing your research. Because it's all spelled out in the climate action plans, what they're going to do to you and for you. We're going to be getting into that. But the climate action plans do specify what the New Green Deal, or the Death Deal, has been talking about. The climate action plans do tell us that we're going to have to rebuild every single building in the United States and worldwide. Need to be retrofitted and upgraded. That everything must be now state of the art. All traditional building are now no longer. Again, the climate action plan, it's a control mechanism. It's controlling all people at all times. It's genocide plans. This is a typical pie chart that you'll see in the climate action plans. It talks about what needs to be reduced in this particular city. And you'll see that in this city, the dark blue is energy supply. And uh, agriculture is that salmon color. Um, look, at these, look at these pie charts in your climate action plans. Take a look at what they have planned for your city and what your city council members have done to you. They work for the United Nations Agenda 21 policies and they're rolling them in on top of you, whether you like it or not. It's a corporate structure. So I talked about the UK government's um, international climate change and their action plan. Everyone's got the action plan. It's worldwide. It's in every city, every state, every country worldwide, without exception. And the Copenhagen Accord uh, commits the world to limiting temperature increases to 2 degrees Celsius and contains plans for finance reaching $100 billion a year by 2020. It's about money. This is about massive land theft. And this is about replacing us with robotics. Our strategy rests on making this transition to a low-carbon, climate-resilient economy. Remember what the word resilience means. Get accustomed to repetitive loss, living without. That's what this plan is. And there's no escaping the fact all developed countries are prime targets. And again, 
They tell us in all the plans that they're phasing out inefficient fossil fuels around the world because they could have an enormous impact on carbon emissions. Again, our petroleum never came from dead dinosaurs. Look at the YouTube, The Origins of Oil, falsely defined in 1892. Now, I found this plan to be very interesting because I've looked at hundreds of climate action plans. This is a climate action plan that I pulled out of the town of, of uh, Bedford. Um, and um, I'm going to just read you some of the aspects of this plan. Um, unbelievable. Uh, they talk about how they must target transportation, residential, commercial, and all waste. America's reliance on foreign oil and other fossil fuels threatens our environment, our economic prosperity, and our national security. Development of environmental practices is the best way to ensure that our climate stays well suited to human comfort. So they talk about transportation, climate action plan, the town of Bedford, this is in Indiana. They talk about the changing climate also means an increase in severity and frequency of storms, including rainfall events, hurricanes, tropical storms, northeastern tornadoes, and more. They go on to talk about that uh, reduce the total number of miles traveled by switching transportation to mass transit, bicycling, and walking improve and increase bicycle use for transportation and recreation, uh, shift to more energy efficient cars by trading in larger, less efficient vehicles for smaller vehicles or pur purchasing hybrid electric vehicles. They go on to tell us that they will have decreasing quality of air. This is happening worldwide. This is the intentional pollution of air. Increased prevalence of diseases severe and longer heat waves that can threaten the health of our most vulnerable. This is word per word out of the Bedford, Indiana Climate Action Plan. Power outages due to heat waves resulting in heat stroke and stress among the aging. Currently Bedford is not in compliance with air quality standards due to persistent ground level smog, ozone particulates worsening air quality from a combination of vehicular emissions, increased heat, increased electrical usage, predicted to contribute to increased cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. So people ask me, well, where's the safe place to go, Deborah? Well, if you remember the very beginning of this PowerPoint, I said there is no safe place to hide. There is no place, safe place to go either. And all the plans talk about this. Those people that are not talking about climate action plans are not talking. Ta climate action plans now are the basis of all of our realities because they are creating, they say, warmer and longer summers in this plan. Pollen, mold season will be extended leading to allergies, trigger, triggering increased asthma attacks, West Nile virus carried by mosquitoes and Lyme disease carried by ticks are expected to become more prevalent with warmer temperatures and increased flooding. All man-made. Residential behavior is critical component of climate change efforts in the town of Bedford. This is a plan uh, for Santa Rosa. This was adopted back in June of 2012. And again, that pie chart uh, hitting transportation, that's the largest area there that you see, 51%. They're taking down our ability to travel. That's why the roads aren't being repaired, because they don't need to repair roads that they don't intend for us to need any longer. And uh, you see about uh, residential energy, that's the next largest pipe uh, area of attack. And then non-residential energy in the maroon, and so on. Complete implementation of this plan will allow the city of Santa Rosa to achieve the adopted target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions 25% below 1990 levels by 2020, that's just next year, and will set the city on a trajectory to achieve the state greenhouse gas reduction target set 
uh, of reducing greenhouse gas emissions 80% below 1990 levels by 2050. So they say in all the plans that smart meters are a requirement. A requirement. Our opt-out in the years we were in opposition to the meter and the opt-out was only an appeasement plan to stop the activism against the meters because it was getting out of California and other people in other states and other countries were starting to hear what was happening here in California. So they gave us the opt-out to quiet us down, to make people think that the government was listening and you didn't have to have a meter. It was never intended. In fact, we found on the Vanderbilt website the social engineering and psychological profiling of us in Northern California that were opposing the smart meters and what they needed to do to get around our opposition. That's in a document out of Vanderbilt. So um, again, facilitate energy efficiency and conservation through behavior changes and all retrofits. I'm gonna move along now. Again, this is all part of the Climate Action Plan, but um, we created a, um, this tab on StopTheCrime.net and we created this sign, Kiss Your Gas Goodbye, Nationwide Climate Action Plans, Switch Natural Gas to Electricity. Now right now, uh, the City of Santa Rosa has been allowing rebuilds to also implement natural gas but they have been discouraging it and their ultimate plans are to deny it completely. And they're fast approaching, no longer allowing natural gas in rebuilds. Again, the resilience definition, just a reminder, its ability to recover from repetitive loss of life, redistribution of land, forced migration and planned receipt, retreats. Uh, resilient cities worldwide, the Rockefeller Foundation, it's all behind resilient cities. Then we get into the residential efficiency retrofits, a roadmap for the future. Worldwide retrofits of all buildings are required. If you do not retrofit your building, you will not get a license if you are an owner and you are renting. Did you hear what I just said? You will not get a license if you own an apartment building you will not be able to rent it unless you have an inspection and your apartment building is retrofitted. And that license allows for re-inspections as more retrofitting continues. This is happening in England right now. Property owners need licenses in order to rent their apartments. And the licensing process also determines whether the owner is fit, fit to be in the position that they're in. So don't be tricked. Um, we're all being tricked. This is really important. I'm gonna quickly move through some more here and then maybe take a, a moment. But Rockefeller and Rothschild's green energy loans for forced retrofitting mandated by the climate action plans as adopted by all states, cities, and nations worldwide. Understand that the Rockefeller loans are a great property heist supported by your local cities. Your local cities approved PACE loans. I was there at the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors back in, I think, 2015, when they approved Rockefeller's PACE loan. It has now been told by a number of legislators that think they are legislating and they're not, but the potential PACE loan crisis in America is facing one, of, one that can no longer be ignored. PACE loans lack computer uh, protections, and they say that the Rockefeller and PACE loans working together to create debt against your property, and if you can't pay back these Rockefeller and PACE loans, your property, your home, will be foreclosed upon. And you will be required to retrofit, but you will then be required to take a loan if you can't pay cash for your retrofitting. 
And these are all predatory lending loans. Make no mistake about it. Parties involved, the building owner, the local government, the PACE administrator, contractor, and other investments. This is predatory lending, and now you've been told and you've been warned. Also understand that the U.S. Department of Energy is facil facilitating Rockefeller and the PACE loan idea. Again, the Department of Energy is a corporation working for the demise of all of us, not what we think at all. PACE financing by Rockefeller Foundation incentivizes retrofitting for renewable energy systems, warning, predatory loan scheme. Google's new tool to fight climate change, resource usage surveillance, reduced energy required. Google is going to be tracking and monitoring energy reduction to meet climate action plans, equalizing all society to pre-industrial emission levels of 1750. No machines, no equipment are all unsustainable. Worldwide monitoring space systems example, recently Brazil's satellite monitoring system showed Brazil's National Institute for Space Research has led the way in developing a space technology program to monitor Brazil's natural resources. Black Start power outages, we talked about that. We recommend that everybody have a, a Black Start power outage party. Uh, turn off all your lights. Try to live in your home without flipping a switch for the weekend. Be taking notes about what you need, flashlights and the like, more water, more food, etc. Most communities don't have contingency plans for black, black starts or power outages, and it will incapacitate most electronic devices and satellites. It must be assumed widespread disruption of communications and transportation will be associated with black start events. And the entire Department of Defense command structure may be incapacitated without notice in the wake of a black start event. Climate change will cause power outages due to heat events. And Rothschild controlled utilities will turn off your power, just like we're seeing happening here. While these deadlines 2020, 2030, speeding things up, to bring in mass absolute mind control. Uh, this is the biggest EU research innovative program ever. It's uh, What is Horizon 2020? And it talks about, it's the financial instrument for implementing the, inno the Innovation Union uh, Europe 2020 flagship aimed at securing Europe's global competitiveness. Again, it's all competitive this. Um, this is a very interesting video um, on Netflix. Uh, certainly, I would recommend all of you watch it. Uh, it's called City 40, C-I-T-Y 40, 40. And it is a secret city, one of many dozens around the world. It's quite revealing. This particular film is shot under cover by a whistleblower that had to leave uh, Russia and, I, and move elsewhere. And uh, it's about a city in, in Russia that w it's not even on the map. And there's thousands of men and women and children who live and work behind double bobbed wire fences monitored by armed guards. They're told they are the creators of the nuclear shield and the saviors of the world. And they are told that everyone is an enemy. And in this hidden world, a mother risks her life to take us inside Russia's largest nuclear city. It's built just like any other city with museums and schools and churches and play yards and areas, but you can't leave from birth to death. Check it out. The power of city 40s, C40 cities. C40 cities have tremendous power to act on climate ambitions and their power only grows when they work together. So let's talk about, this is a map showing where the C40 cities are located. Uh, these are some of the players in the C40 cities. Uh, and again, for wealthier, high-emitting cities, that means an immediate and steep decline required to
to current emission levels. Many rapidly developing cities can maintain their current levels for up to a decade. And in a small number of cases, there is some scope for emissions per person to rise slightly before they fall to zero. In all cases, cities must divulge considerably, diverge considerably from their current business as usual emissions trajectories. So who's involved? Well, the Clinton Foundation's committed to addressing climate change and energy uh, transition, the World Bank, Johnson & Johnson, 100 Resilient Cities, with, which is um, Rockefeller, that has now recently converged into a mega data funding arm. Uh, we've now uh, been told that the 100 Resilient Cities program that was launched and funded in large part by Rockefeller has now diverged towards me mega da data. And uh, that's mind control. Um, ICLEI, of course, is involved, the Ford Foundation, MasterCard, Citibank, and EAT. EAT, E-A-T, it's the world's leading platform for global flu food transformation. Did you know that your food is being transformed as you speak? Mm. Also funded by the UK government and many, many more. But not to worry, if you're on the coastlines and low-lying areas and you're going to get hit by a blast wave accelerator that you've heard me talk about, or low-lying sea level rise or storm surge, they're going to float you out to sea. They have a firm uh, and they're creating a float, floating city and uh, one off of New York where they can house 10,000 people be 100% self-sustainable. I noticed no cemeteries on these floating contraptions. These, these clusters would be repeated in multiples of six to form a 12 hectare village for 1,650 residents and then again to form a home for 10,000 civilians. The project addresses housing shortages and threats from rising sea levels. And it has the facilities to produce its own power, fresh water, and heat. Food production and farming would be integrated and follow a zero waste policy. Can't make this stuff up. This is a social experiment happening now in Africa and Sierra Leone, where they're building a city for 5,000 expats and uh, they're not going to use uh, any concrete or steel because they're saying that's not sustainable. Uh, the, this is a self-sustaining community and it's built out of bamboo. And these are all aspects of future cities. Very much reminded me of the skyline in London, how, how these cities are looking. In fact, I heard something very, dis very, very horrific about some of the shapes of some of the buildings. And I won't say this on video. I'll tell you later. But some of the shapes of buildings have um, sexual meanings behind them. I'll say that much. So we're in a sharing. We're, sh we're sharing the economy worldwide. This is where you own nothing. This is the economy we're, we're headed into now under the control of just a few. The sharing economy is a business model for profit, a one world system that we are in. We are in. Make no mistake. Kim trails are borderless, frequencies are borderless, policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are borderless. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. So we can say goodbye to retail, to sole proprietorship, small business, owning anything. Reuse economy. It's a reuse economy. Circular economy that I spoke about earlier. And it's a fee for service. To be sustainable, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, reduce CO2 emissions, to prevent climate change. Weather weapons. Sharing economy is a mode of consumption whereby goods and services are not owned by a single user, but rather only temporarily assessed by members of a network, and underutilized assets are shared either for free or for a fee. So you can talk about renting cars, renting bikes in San Francisco. They're now going to start up a pogo stick business where you can rent pogo sticks to get around in San Francisco. 
you pay so much a hop. I'm not <laughs> kidding. And uh, we talk about, again, the shared economy, just a, an illustration of what that looks like. We are in a shared economy. This is um, interesting. This is Airbnb's mission statement. And Airbnb is uh, run by Google. And um, Airbnb is mission is to move us out of our homes and our cars and our rural lands into smart, smart, unsustainable, and I call them disposable cities. Airbnb's mission is to live in a world where one day you can feel like you're home anywhere and not in a home at all. It's the goal. Again, the Wildlands map, many of you have seen this over the years. We reverse the colors in this so that you could easily see where the human settlement zones were designated. Um, I think this map probably at this point in time needs massive adjustment because of the massive amounts of people that are being eliminated as we speak, particularly off the coastlines. We won't see um, uh, people living on the coastlines and you'll see, it, see and understand that in a minute. You need to understand that the smart grid infrastructure was only ever intended to last about 20 years until about the year 2030, according to industry documents that we found when we were researching the smart meters. Most of the U.S. roads and highway infrastructure will not be maintained. We all know this. This is an interview, I did a reenactment of my meeting with uh, Ted Turner. You can watch this on YouTube. Uh, Ted the Terrible, Malthusian Ted Turner. This uh, film was put together by um, a man I knew who was a great activist and ahead of his time by decades, uh, Anthony J. Hilder, who died about a month ago. So here we go, the blast wave accelerator. Global precision strike on the cheap, no barrel, 200 foot notched rails, and detonated March the 21st or less as desired. They go on base anywhere. Projectiles, stealth, excellent stealth, no plume, affordability, veracity, reaction time, survivability, recallability, effectiveness, being worked on at Aberdeen and NASA for lofting of fuel nanosats. So here's what we're talking about uh, as we move through. Our coastlines are under mass attack worldwide. We discovered this because we were listening to some homeowners um, in Del Mar in Southern California that have very exclusive beach homes that are right on the sand, beautiful area. And they were battling their city. They didn't want their building and planning department to write in planned retreat. And as a builder, I'm wondering what on earth is planned retreat. So I just typed in planned retreat and I was stunned. I found that it meant that you would surrender your land to um, sea level rise and uh, coastal erosion and you would walk away. Well, you couldn't really walk away. They were requiring that you destroy your home without any remuneration at all. And so it was easy to figure it out because we were so familiar with the NASA war document. We had read Blast Wave Accelerator so many times that it became evident that this was the technology that had been created back in World War II as we continued to investigate it. And uh, now we understand uh, what has happened. Long, undefensible coastlines against underwater threats. Sensitivity to casualties greatly enhanced by the CNN syndrome. So as people die, CNN, Fox News, ABC, NBC, the entire group will sensationalize the deaths by technologies that they refuse to acknowledge exist. They talk about um, a subsurface floating incapacitated missiles implanted by freighters, blast wave accelerator and mines coastlines under attack. Now, I have a YouTube up. It is called Coastlines Under Attack. I would urge you all to listen to it, Coastlines Under Attack. All branches of the PSYOPs USA Inc. military operations are signed on. 
they are all signed on to the sustainable goals, just like all law firms and our U.S. law firms are as well. They're bringing in laws based on false science, fines, penalties, regulations under a false illusion that we have a government for the people and by the people and we do not. For those of you that have not watched the movie Vice, V-I-C-E, I would recommend that you do. It's a good opportunity to see the terrorist Dick Cheney operate with executive orders and what he did to get us into war. So for those of you, Vice is a very important movie. It shows you the blatant maneuverings of people that have been human compromised within our phony fiat government. So Coastline's planned retreat, um, massive retreats are planned in the United States. It's important to understand that um, it will represent the largest forced migration in U.S. history. 70% of all populations live on the coastlines. Why? Because they have negative ions. They can think better and they're less likely to be mind controlled. They want us off the coastlines for more successful mind control. So this is also very important to understand because what I'm gonna get into next uh, is leading into this. Um, our water aquifers that they're claiming are over pumped and the areas along the coast that they're claiming we have fault, uh, salt water intrusion. This is how this is explained. Um, think of an aquifer almost like a beehive comb and you've got this room under the surface of the ground where the water is trapped. And so you have a well in there uh, um, and you're pumping out of this cone. And uh, because they're not allowing primary water to recharge that overpumped aquifer, they're saying we're running out of water. Now they're doing this specifically along the coastal areas because when they vacate the water out of an overpumped um, well or aquifer, the salt water comes in and fills it. So that's called salt water intrusion and that's planned. They're creating that occurrence. And, um, and uh, it's a trick to create the illusion that we have false water intrusion, which is intentionally created again by overpumping aquifers that abut the ocean. And this intentional aquifer depletions are why we are being told we're running out of water. Simply put, the aquifer water basin is overpumped and not recharged with primary water. So again, uh, this is posted on primarywater.org. You can read this for yourself. Um, this is uh, the coastlines under attack YouTube video that we have up. Again, I urge you all to take a look at that. They talk about how uh, rising sea levels will disrupt transportation, how it will have a major effect on some of our major airports in the United States as they intentionally wipe us out around the coastlines with all military systems fully engaged. Did you know that every branch of the military in the United States is preparing to relocate um, to higher ground? Did you know that? Has your representatives, anybody you've talked to told you this? Who's gonna pay for that? And where are they gonna relocate? On your home, on your land, where? It's all part of what is happening. So again, planned retreat. Um, Bloomberg, uh, we're certainly looking at what they're doing with insurances. They're increasing insurance costs to, to force relocation. By not renewing insurance policies, as we're now seeing in many of the already burned areas, they can force people out. Massive asset stripping because when you take everything anybody ever owned and you don't allow insurance, they can't sell. They can't sell. That's happening right now to hundreds of people in Truckee, in Nevada City, in California, in other 
Burnham Up cities that are on the Burnham Up list. So insurance policies and acquiring insurance policies are going to be the, pa the pathway to forced relocation and designation of where populations live. Um, I had a map that I showed the folks in the UK about how the UK and even Ireland is, um, has large areas of coastal areas proposed to be underwater. Um, I want to talk about the planned worldwide uh, infrastructure failures and how this is being predicted. This is horrifying. If what I've said to you already isn't enough, please understand this. Um, aging infrastru infrastructure worldwide, they're telling us, is not built for climate change. The infrastructure that was built, and we're talking about bridges, levees, reservoirs, dams, wastewater treatment plants, and more, lack emergency action plans for high hazard infrastructure. And they've had deferred maintenance for years. There are billion dollar gaps on intentionally deferred maintenance on all infrastructure. And now with the new normal of weather weapons, which they're calling climate change, they're using all of the infrastructure literally as bombs. I'm gonna get into that because uh, I need to start wrapping this up, but they plan to wipe out our infrastructure. Dams are going to go. Oroville will go. Fake lakes make quakes. Looming disasters are dam collapses. I want you to remember that. Um, there are many dams worldwide. We're going to go over that quickly. Dams and man-made reservoirs trigger earthquakes, and they know it. They've always known that the weight of the water in areas where they confine the water to poison it and ship it in as drinking water when you have primary water, and you could have utilized the distribution of water from primary water wells like Momar Haddafi did. But no, we have been blinded by our state legislators and the water barons to drink poison, toxic, atmospheric water. And now we're being tricked by the illusion that we need dams and reservoirs. They cause earthquakes, and they know it. So let's talk about that. Globally, there are many identified cases of earthquakes that were triggered by reservoirs. The most serious was a 7.9 magnitude back in 2008, killed 80,000 people. And then problems with the big dams. The industry has choked more than half of the Earth's major rivers with more than 57,000 large dams. So what is the problem with the dams? Even the Hoover Dam and Lake Mead, there were never earthquakes near the Hoover Dam or Lake Mead before that was constructed back in the 30s. It's called impoundment. And that is the structural load of, of containing the water, artificially contained water. And it's the weight and pressure by the water, which also lubricates the fault plates in the geographical structures under the dam and uh, under pressure and movement, think of the dams filling in the winter, more water, and they deplete them in the summer. That's causing weight disparity. That's causing earthquakes. Do you know what the USGS said about Oroville Dam? Not to worry, Oroville Dam is fine. The um, work done on the spillway is fine. The USGS says they're not familiar with why the spillway had a earthquake. They've never seen that before. An agency put in place to deceive us and kill us. So I can only say again here in the NASA war document, you see the word dams highlighted. They're going to hit the dams. They also say in this document they're going to use the towers. Those are the cell towers. They're going to allow us to fund all of these required retrofits, re retrofits with green loans. They have green credit plans. Loans must meet sustainab sustainable development requirements. Loans that do not meet sustainable development requirements will no longer be made. That's a shutdown of all business. If your business is not doing something that is sustainable, 
then they will shut your business down and they won't make you a loan. That is in the green loans, in the documents. And the banks will be massively chastised and so will the loan lenders. If they've had a lengthy reputation with some client and they mistakenly make a loan, they will be chastised. Ernst & Young, I've got to fly through this, Ernst & Young and, and uh, um, Lady uh, Lynn Forrester de Rothschild are partners in a brilliant scam. Did you know that Santa Rosa hired Ernst & Young to create revenue after the fires? Did you know this? We have a Luciferian leadership in this country, in every city, every county, everywhere. So what have they done? They've hired Ernst & Young right after the fires. It was in the Press Democrat. I didn't even know about Ernst & Young. I read it, looked it up, started to review it, and was stunned. Here's what it is. Ernst & Young has come in to Santa Rosa and every other town everywhere worldwide to create new revenue streams off of natural capital. What does that mean? It means charging us and pricing all nature, including the air. So pricing water, soil, air, plants, animals, minerals, oceans, forests, sand dunes, salt marsh, sediment, all beach systems, agricultural land, and more. Charging for pollinator habitat, the insects themselves, natural capital coalition has been formed through Ernst & Young out of London. And they're based right here too and hired by our illegitimate, deceiving city representatives. So all natural capital, pricing and selling nature, pricing and charging all of us for the air we breathe. They have sustainable finance also, same thing as the green finance, green credit, United Nations, again, forced migration. Do you know that they have a policy division to help orchestrate the forced migration? Did you know that that's already set up to move us out of our homes as we're hit by disasters? There's already an agency set up. and all the strategies that they have to increase migration, all the policies. And then I saw this fence that they built along Hungary, the border. It has heat sensors, cameras, and border hunters. And who's really being kept in or out? You have to ask yourself. So we're at war. We've been lied to. I talk about the real purpose of AI. Um, I'll discuss this more at um, another uh, meeting, but I recommend uh, that you all understand that um, the purpose of AI is to emerge clay and iron, that it's to create a new gene spliced species with living modified genes based on metal and electronics and human biological cells. There are already laws that our Rothschild lawyers are creating to create laws for identifying what part of an entangled human and robotics has rights. Laws already being written. Small satellite revolution, satellites everywhere, spying, flying, all over, everywhere, all the time. And again, I really appreciate all of you for listening to this. Do your own research. Uh, this is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net and PrimaryWater.org. Learn the truth. Let's not be deceived. It's our job. We have to live in right conduct every single day and do the next best right thing. And that includes learning the hard facts of reality, as bad as it is. Because bad is the truth, and it's really the truth that will truly set us free. It's really only the truth. We cannot live in deception and be deceived and be 
and be murdered any longer. So stay tuned to StopTheCrime.net. Please visit our website regularly. Go to our YouTube video channel. We're continuously posting radio shows. Go to our document page. And again, thank you so much. Deborah Tavares signing off. Wow.